If asked in interview, do you know the difference between static and dynamic airdrop analysis? Do you know the difference between SOC level airdrop analysis versus IP level airdrop analysis? Do you know what are the airdrop hotspots found inside a chip? Let's start our journey to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the uh, below points. Power delivery network, its significance on airdrop analysis. Next, we will cover the definitions of airdrop and ground bounds. Next, we will show the position of airdrop in both the design flows of the IP design as well as the ASIC design flow. Next, we will touch base on some of the fundamentals of resistance, ACL, AVL, and circuit and parasitics. Next, we'll do a classification of static and dynamic airdrop analysis. Next, we will show the airdrop and its impact on the timing analysis. Next, we will talk about the airdrop effects to be found for multiple power domains. Finally, we will talk about the airdrop thermal hotspot detections and its mitigation method. So, that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Introduction For continuous downsizing of the technology nodes, the chip operating frequency is continuously increasing at which the timing related defects coming out of high speed tests are high in proportion. Now, folks, you might have noticed that today your mobile phone processor, the gigahertz processing speed is increasing with every new generation, and higher drops are very much relevant for this high speed switching operation. We'll come to that point later. DFT techniques may cause the test vectors to contain non-functional states which result in higher switching activities compared to the functional modes of operation specific scenario. Excessive switching activity causes higher power dissipation which in turn may cause higher drop hotspots that could damage the circuit. Due to the higher higher drops which increase signal propagation delays during the test causing yield loss. Power Delivery Network The power grid simulation in ASIC causes power delivery network abbreviated as PDN to turn on all the leaf cells inside any VLSI circuit. Now, here is a short and sweet diagram of the power delivery network which is easy to understand. Now, let me point out the uh, parts and components of this power delivery network. This is power ring. There are two types of power rings, hence we have shown in two different colors. One is VDD, another one is VSS. Next is the power strip. Here, these take out lines from the power rings into the cells. So, there are again two colors because of the two different supply voltage, that is VDD and VSS. This one is called IO pad. This one is called IO pillar. This one is called corner cell. And this area is the core where our silicon chip resides. So the power delivery network, as you can see from the figure, distributes the power that is VDD and VSS lines into the core area. IR drop is a excess voltage drop caused by parasitic RLC of the metal routes on the PDN, happening even before the desired voltage can reach the target power pins of the standard cell. IP blocks or macro blocks. So, as per this particular definition, the IR drop happens well before the actual voltage from the power rings, as shown in the right hand side, could reach up to the specific standard cell or macro blocks or any IP block to the power strips. Power buses carry large DC current, causing the large IR drop, which in turn gradually reduces VDD towards the center of a chip when the power supply is driven by pads around the perimeter. So, here in this slide, we have shown you the short and sweet diagram of a power delivery network and explained in a nutshell how IR drop happens to this power delivery network. IR drop and ground bounce. The total IR drop is further divided into resistive and inductive subcomponents. Here is a simple graph to explain the two subdivisions. This is our VDD line. This is our ground line. Now, the resistive voltage drop, also known as on-chip IR drop, is mostly due to the voltage drop because of the on-chip metal or via interconnect resistance. Here in this diagram, this small drop is called the IR drop. 
The inductive drop, also known as the DIDT noise, is mostly caused by the in package inductor. The DIDT noise, often referred to as simultaneous switching noise, also known as round bounce, which is caused by rapid changes in the current passing through the parasitic inductors in the power network. And here in this figure, this bump is a round bounce. So you can see the, the two components of the IA drop, the total IA drop are shown in the right hand side figure with a drop and a bump for the VDD line and the ground line. Both of these contributes to the IA drop as a whole. So we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. IA drop in IP or analog design and ASIC design. Here in this slide, our flow proceeds in the direction of this arrow and in the left hand side we will keep the IP design or the analog design flow and in the right hand side we will keep the ASIC design flow. Here the graphics are used as a symbolical meaning so that you can identify easily whatever I have just mentioned now. So first in the IP or the analog design part the schematic design is done by the designers. Next we draw the layout by hand. Next, we do the ERC and LVS check on the layout and make sure that the layout is clean of any DRC or LVS violations. Next, we do the parasitic extraction abbreviated as EX and other set of physical verification. Next, we do the EM and IR drop analysis. Generally, these two are paid or analyzed side by side because of their similarity in their nature. In this channel, I have already created one episode on EM analysis in both the IP or asset design flow. Next, in this flow comes uh, characterization and delivery. So, because this is an IP, you have to characterize it means the electrical characterization and final packaging of this IP. So, we are done with the flow of the IP design. Let us move on to the ASIC design flow. First, there is a front end design part. We are not going in a detail because that would take much more space and not very much relevant in this particular case. Next, we do the floor planning and PNR. As we proceed further in the back end side, we have the DRC and LVS check after the floor planning, PNR, and the layout is done. This step makes sure that the layout is DRC and LVS clean. Next, we have the parasitic extraction abbreviated as PEX and uh, rest of the physical verification X. In the next step, we do the EM and IR drop analysis. Finally, we do the formal verification and we proceed towards the sign off. So, you can see that the IR drop analysis is performed in both IP level as well as the ASIC design level in this particular highlighted step. The purpose of this particular slide is done. So let's move on to the next slide. Resistance of metal strip and ACL heavier. Here in this slide, we'll look back and touch base some of our fundamental concepts which will help you to understand the IR drop analysis and phenomena altogether. We have a very close relation of the current resistance and voltage that is I, R and V. You can see the triangle and we can have several combination with these three particular components in multiple expressions of a circuit. Next, this is a metal wear and this is very much similar to the metal routes where the resistivity rho is A into R by L is the cross sectional area, L is the length, R is the resistance. This is a very fundamental concept and uh, this concept is used as is in the resistance calculation of the metal routes in the BEOL part of the chip design process. So the next one is ACL that is search of current law where we know that the uh, sum of all the currents reaching to a particular node is zero, which we can express by an equation that is I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. As per the direction, whatever current is coming towards the node here shown in the picture is leaving the node. All these concepts are very much uh, important in the IR drop analysis generation. We are going to give further in further slides. The KVL that is Kirchhoff's voltage law also we can imagine from this circuit here you can see all some of the all voltage drops are equal that is I in, in force as well as the recipe. So I have touched with the basic physics here in this particular slide so that you can now correlate in a very fine gradient concept of IR drop analysis in upcoming slides. So we are done with this particular slide let's move on. Simple circuit diagram and parasitic. This is our simple circuit diagram where we are using the MOS. 
and this is without parasitic so just for your understanding here and once we have the post layout version that means layout is done we are done with the drc lvs and we have extracted in the parasitic extraction process that is cex we have uh, with parasitics that means circuit plus the extracted parasitics because of the actual layout or the wearing that come in a real picture of a chip simple circuit shown in the left hand side becomes like this where you have lot of resistance and capacitances here you can see in the right hand side it's real, very clearly uh, shown here although this is not explicit however this is a very exemplary purpose that is this is how the resistances and capacitances will come around any node that we are working also again i emphasize this is not actual case or actual circuit this is just for your understanding how the parasitics in the post layout process will come and get attached to different nodes because these parasitics will contribute for the em and ir and we're done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide ir drop classification so we have our ir drop grossly aggregated in two parts first one is the static one that is static ir drop and the next one is the dynamic IR drop. So this very simple classification. Now in upcoming slide, we will touch base both the static and dynamic IR drop analysis one by one. We are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the static IR drop analysis. The IR drop is defined as the I average into the resistance segment, that is R where the segment. Here I mentioned the word static. Here IR drop static means the static IR drop. And I average uh, well known quantities, the average current you have come across already in your textbook. And the resistance R where segment, we have just shown you in the pictorial representation what the resistance segment looks like for a metal drop. Now, this I average is uh, all factors out of the leakage currents. Here you can see a simple representation of uh, various metal layers that is going through. So if we say the horizontal ones, the first one here, here it will one be metal two, three, and this could be metal four. However, you can see inside I have drawn the resistances. Once the parasitic extraction tool splits up any of the metal out, it will split into multiple resistors, and they will be connected in the either in the TSPF or in the F file as like this. So resistance one, resistance, resistance three, resistance. If you see their nodes, they will be also in the synchronous of connectivity so this is a simple picture of the rware segment that you can imagine and the power delivery network part from where the power comes in i have shown few slides back as a pictorial record. with that and this in the mind and then proceed for our next explanation points static ir drop is an average voltage drop for the design hence it is stimulus vector dependent vectors are taken from one the switching probabilities of each cell and number two applied switching probability of initial cell the average current depends totally on the time period of the clock. This is very fundamental. If you go back in the definition of I average current, you will find out in the mathematical example. Static IR drop is dependent on the RC of the power grid connecting the power supply to the respective standard cell. That is what I mentioned that we already have shown a PDN few slides back and this metal route you can see that uh, all these uh, things will be coupled together for IR drop analysis. We are done with the particular slide on to the next slide for few further points on static IR drop. The PDN reduced to a resistive network and the voltage drop across this resistive network is calculated based on a given current source. Loads are assumed to be driven by PDN. The static IR drop is performed around all the production RC and PVT corners combined. So I have two separate episodes about the RC corners and the PVT corners in the same VLSI FAQ. You can find out them in the FAQ playlist. In case you are not familiar with the RC and PVT corners, please go ahead and watch to have an in-depth knowledge. In VLSI, the static IR drop is performed across all the combination from RC and PVT corners so that we have the full coverage. Next, gate channel leakage current is the major reason for the static IR drop. There's another good point. Static IR drop was good for sign off analysis in older technology nodes, where the sufficient natural decoupling capacitance from the power network and non switching logic was available. About the nodes which are beyond 130 nanometer, higher than 130 nanometer, or 90, all those technology nodes down below, right? Now, today we are on below 10 nanometer. Dynamic IR drop is a lot of signal. That's why we have a particular point. Sometimes switching factors can uh, derive from the functional waveforms of the safe or the VCD files. We are done with this particular static IR drop analysis. Now let's move on to the dynamic IR drop analysis. Dynamic IR drop. 
Unlike static method, in reality, no two cells inside chip receive the same supply voltage due to placement, nearby cell activity and dynamic nature of its operation. So here you can see one simple diagram. Here is our clock pulse. The black line horizontal is our ideal VDD and the line red line with the wings is our real VDD which is in sync with the clock pulse you can see here. Here in X axis we have kept the time and in Y axis we have kept the voltage although you cannot see the X and Y axis here. Now I have uh, shown you the VDD and the black line horizontal is our ideal ground and the line with the wings that is shown in green that's why i have kept the color same is our real ground so these are the two things you are going to get explanation in the upcoming points thus each standard cell have its unique dynamic voltage signature for the power or the ground pin cycle to cycle the dynamic voltage variation depends on overall change in the peak current which causes the RLC oscillation or noise in the board or IC packaging and understand the wings that shown in the right hand side picture that is in the real VDD and real ground comes from the RLC oscillation or noise. Number two, change in the toggle rate of the local cells which could result in temporary depletion of charge and high frequency noise drop. We have covered some points, we are yet to cover further more points on dynamic IR drop. So let's move on to the next slide. Here, the PDN is modeled as a network of the impedance and time domain or transient analysis is done. And see in the right hand side, I have said that we have kept the time in the x axis. And when we do any analysis with respect to time, it referred as the transient analysis. So, because of the RLC and we are seeing the swings, we do the transient analysis on the PDN. And the PDN is seen as the combination of the RLC. Those are parasitics, those are not from the design intended point of view. Here, the IR drop is caused by high speed switching transistor inside logic cells. Peak current demand puts off when a large number of circuitry switches at the same time. Hence, dynamic IR drop is less dependent on a clock period and can't be modeled by pure traditional static timing analysis. So you can see from the right hand side, there will be a lot of swings that is coming out of the RLC and uh, this would cause a peak current shoot off and that's very much related with the dynamic IR drop analysis. And this is dynamic in nature that is time. So it cannot be modeled with the static timing analysis where we are performing everything in static manner. That means all our pre-characterized values and not in the on-the-go analysis that we do in our transient analysis. So in case you have some confusions about the static timing analysis, we also have a playlist in this channel. So go there into the playlist and start from first episode. There are a couple of episodes which contains the theoretical part and as well as we cover the hands-on practical lectures here in the playlist. So go ahead and watch them. Preventive IR drop analysis and investigative analysis is case pattern specific. Here, whatever the dynamic thing we are dealing with is very much dependent on the test pattern. Why we talk about test pattern? Because the high switching frequency that we are talking about in the context of dynamic IR drop comes from various test patterns that we can generate. Those detections of the dynamic IR drop will be through the test patterns of various kinds. We are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. IR drop and timing analysis. Undetected IR drop can be compensated by mean of increasing the supply. Extreme cases, this would lead also to timing analysis failure, whose root cause is higher voltage drop above specified threshold or margin. Dynamic IR drop neither can be detected nor can be modeled by static timing analysis. Altogether, the IR drop can cause setup violations on the data path signals. Here is our example from the STA playlist where we have shown the setup violation using the open timer, open timer tool and IR drop can cause hold time violations on the clock tree network. Here in the playlist we have also shown the hold violation using the open timer tool and uh, these are the explanation or snapshots from the episodes in the STA playlist. Delay of a cell depends on the voltage difference that is VDD minus VSS both functions of T that means both are transient as we have shown in the slide before. 
This delay increases with the increase of standard cell threshold voltage while we vary the threshold voltage in a manner for the standard cell for the different categories like ULVT, LVT, SVT, HVT and UHVT. So these are various standard cell packages for different threshold voltage. ULVT is ultra low VT, low LVT is L low VT, SVT is the standard threshold voltage, HVT is the high threshold voltage and UHVT is ultra high threshold voltage. So keeping all the points in mind you can see that with the hit on the setup and hold violation as well as in the delay the altogether the timing analysis is get affected by the IR drop happening in an actual check we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next IR drop with multiple power domains power distribution among multiple power domain e is the abbreviation in a single chip is significant in floor planning and placement phases so here you can see one uh, diagram that is a block diagram for a power domain blocks in a chip. So let me bring out my mouse. So whenever we have different power domains, we definitely we have a controlling block called the power management block. And here PD1 that is the power domain 1 will have VDD1, PD2 will have the VDD2, PD3 will have the VDD3. So I have just named it maybe a digital block, analog block and some macro that you have purchased from your another vendor. This is a typical representation of the different power domains i have explained about the power domains in detail in the upf series and you can find the lectures on the upf in the upf playlist of this channel proceeding forward the next point is the pnr tool synthesizes the power distribution network based on the power budget specification for each domain while keeping the power network constraint under consideration because of all the blocks you can see in the right hand side picture the budgeting has to be in a proper way so that proper voltage if there are three different vdds in a single circuit they will receive in a proper manner airdrop map is used to analyze the power network we'll later come to the airdrop map if analyzed maximum IR drop is not acceptable, then reconstraint and resynthesize are done. So these are engineering changes that we do as per our analysis in the IR drop. After the IR drop becomes acceptable, the new floor plan is created with added power or ground pads. I have shown the pads in the first or second slide in this particular lecture. So we are done with the cases of multiple power domains and how the budgeting and all the things we deal with the different power domains when we have in a how we approach the situations. It's just discussed here in this slide. We are done here. Let's move on to the next slide. Thermal hotspot by IR drop. The heat produced in a chip is proportional to the dissipated power. That is what I touch base in the fundamental slide where I have shown the relation of V, I and R. So I square R is power dissipation in which causes the heat and all those things we have done in our fundamentals in our textbook. An excessive power dissipation during the operation will increase the circuit temperature well beyond the safe zone causing the permanent physical damage. Such zones are predicted by dynamic IR drop analysis and referred to as hotspots. Now, how do they look? They look like this. So you can see different colors. And these are heat signatures predicted by IR drop analysis inside a chip. So you can see there are different color gradients here in the right hand side picture. Generally from green towards the red, we more approach the more hot regions are there. So this thermal signature is kind of similar to if you see the infrared detection of heat sometimes used in medical sciences. You see the videos where a human body temperature is scanned by the different scanners. So there you also find some similar heat signature. They are the same kind of color gradients are used here we do it by the IR drop analysis tool and we have a similar kind of heat signature happening inside the entire chip we have some zones which are less heated we have some zones which are extremely heated here in the highest color in the red so obviously the tool will give you the legends about the power ratings and dissipations happening for each of the color so this is the heat signature these are called the thermal hotspots where different spots inside the chip can get heated and over time they are not cured then they will cause the power damage that is the purpose of the air drop analysis to detect these hotspots and correct them way before the sign off thermal gradients are hotspot due to the various different functional blocks with different power dissipation over current or voltage stress for a long time of continuous generally our chips if it is a handle device they are switched off but in case of say network routers or servers they will be kept on and on on and on for a long time so these are under the constant current or voltage stress so if any hotspot generates in in such a chip over time they will grow and become fat and the damage would happen to a large 
larger part of the circuitry. All these thermal hotspots are detected by dynamic eye drop analysis and they are cured by the engineering changes so that things are well taken care before the chip goes into the hands of the end customer. Here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Here in this slide, we'll talk about the airdrop mitigation. So far, we have discussed about all the reasons behind the airdrop, how we detect the airdrop and our detection procedure theories we have covered so far. Now, here in this slide, we'll talk about some of the mitigation methods in the upcoming points. I airdrop impact on the clock tree network causing the whole time violation while the airdrop data path signal nets are caused data time violation. I've also touched with this point, this particular point, few slides back. To deal with such situation, one may separate the standard cells with high switching activity apart so that the burden on a given bump to feed many standard cells can be mitigated. The lines coming from IO pad into the power wings and then going for strips, those will be well taken care if separate out zones where there is a higher switching activity and there is a less switching activity. So chances will be less of getting hot spots and uh, the circuit will be cured of the IR drop violation. And these are the methods, the engineering changes we are going through in this airdrop mitigation site. With padding, clock cells technique, clock buffers or inverters and clock gate cells are given extra space to keep out regions to avoid placement of standard cells and any excessive cell density around them. Decap, that is decoupling capacitor, insertion around the cells within a dynamic IR drop hotspot region is another way of mitigation. High driving strength standard cell create a dynamic IR drop issue because if the driving strength is high, it will draw more current and more current and cause a more dynamic IR drop in the long run with respect to the time. Self padding is used for these cells or we insert the decap cells around them to mitigate the IR drop. So these are few examples of the engineering changes after we detect the IR drop hotspots through a preventive analysis. In case we find the hotspots, we apply one of these techniques sometimes as per the design and case by case basis here you can find a different solution as per your own work experience so please uh, let me know in the comment you have uh, used uh, some other techniques for IR drop mitigations to share with others we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide summary here let me summarize the entire discussion we have done so far in the past slides in this episode most of the times, the undetected silicon IR drop may lead to appropriate voltage not reaching the transistor in EMOS. Very simple point because if the drop happens, that amount of voltage is subtracted from the power line and the end cell, the leaf cell will not get the desired amount of voltage because of the KVL, right? This can be compensated by increasing the supply voltage but may contribute to the timing analysis failure for extreme cases. If the IR drop exceeds a specified threshold, typically say 10% of the VDD, the chip could become defective, the kind of de facto standards that we use in a design house. IR drop analysis is necessary for both at the block level and the chip level to assimilate preventive design strategy. IR drop gets to be bigger problem as lower supply voltages are used in lower technology node. Air drops in metal routes cause the wires to heat up. Oxide is a good heat insulator. So over time, air drop may build up heat in the metal routes. This can degrade metal wires resistance and performance over time. When the wires get hotter, they become more resistive, causing more IR drops and more heat until the wire melts down. For thermal runaway, this may cause burnout problem. So we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on. Thank you for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes. Put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.